Hello, welcome to the video. I'm Stuart G5STU and this is the back of an FT101E courtesy of Mike M0 MSN. So thanks again Mike for donating this radio to me. This is a very quick update on the state of this radio and what we're going to do to it. So I'll keep this as quick as possible. I'll tell you what I've fixed and what's coming up next. That's bloody heavy. Okay, so what we've fixed so far is the mode selector when selecting LSB, it was very crackly and it wasn't actually selecting properly. I put some deoxy on the switch, wiggled it a few times, that fixed that problem straight away. Super easy fix that was. The VFO when turning, it was turning by itself. So you turn to a frequency and it would pull back a little bit. Obviously that's just sticky grease in the, uh, there's a bearing just behind this knob. So you pull the knob off, pull this off, this disc off. There's a bearing behind there re-grease that, jobs are good and super, super uh, slick that is now. So that's fixed. Uh, everything else on the front is fine, nothing else to do. The meters work, the lights work, everything selects. There's no crackling with any of the other connectors. I have put spray in all of the pots while I was there. Right, we do actually have a serious problem in that the, it was receiving by the way, it's not at the moment, I will explain. Um, it was a receive. It was receiving when I got it, and it was it was receiving very well. The tone generator was working, all that sort of stuff. Everything worked for receive perfectly. Now, the accessory plug in the back. If you haven't got an accessory, you're supposed to have a short between pins one and two soldered across the back here. Now that was missing, and I did ask Mike if he cut it deliberately to uh, you know just as a wind up. It wasn't him, so obviously somebody further up the ownership chain um, had either put on a, you know, just when they were selling it, just popped on a plug just to complete the unit, not realising it was complete. Whatever. It's, um, Mike never had this transmitting, so he, he would never have known that that was the case. I've soldered those together. Once those pins are, uh, are shorted, effectively, or jumpered, I should say, you then get power traveling up to the final PA section, which is here. So these are original NEC tubes. Uh, you can't buy these anymore. There are, you, I think you can get American branded ones, but you have to add an extra capacitor into the neutralization circuit to make them work. Now, hopefully these tubes have got enough life left in them for me to air this machine, because uh, that's all I really care about. I'm not looking for full power output. As long as we can be heard, I'll be happy. Anyway, after completing the short circuit, not, sorry, the jumper on the accessory cable, I powered the machine on once more, uh, turned on the heaters. The driver tube was already lighting up without, without, the, without the jumper wire anyway. So the, the, the driver tube was lighting up fine when the heater was switched on. The final tubes weren't. After I put the jumper in, the final, both final tubes did light up sort of evenly and I thought, brilliant. We've got a radio. However, that was not to be. Um, after I left it sat there for about five minutes, before, you know, before um, even thinking about tuning up and transmitting. And because obviously if you've got broken components, it can take a while for, it, for problems to manifest in themselves. What happened was the, there's a regulator board, which is over the back here. This is called the regulator board. This is where you set your bias, uh, bias. And a couple of resistors in there have gone pop. I have replaced them now. Uh, this board also generates tones. On the front of the machine, there's a switch uh, here, 25 kilohertz and 100 kilohertz. If you set it to say 100, uh, what that will do is it will inject a tone at zero, you know, every 100 kilohertz, basically, 100 and 200. It's so that engineers can fix these things out in the field, basically. So it's super useful. Anyway, that bit worked. Now, the we had magic smoke coming off of this board. We popped a couple of resistors. That suggests either, I don't know, finals are completely knackered. Perhaps the tubes are knackered. Might be some capaci capacitors in the PA section are knackered. Some resistors. Could be anything, to be quite honest. Um, what's also happened is since putting that jumper wire in, there's a resistor, there's a couple of resistors have popped. One on the 
rectifier board, which is down here. So this is the mains power in. And what you can see on this board here, this machine's dead, by the way. It's, you know, it's, it's fully drained. Um, no risk of getting shocked at the moment. There's various different voltages come off this board. So you can test them with your tester and make you can see if you're somewhere handy. Um, this is kind of like the first part of the radio, you know, power's coming in and then it's being distributed out. Now, there's a resistor in there that's popped, it's clearly popped. I don't think it was, well, I, th I don't think it was popped when I got this, uh, because I know Mike did some work on this board. He replaced a couple of diodes because it wasn't even powering on originally. It was making lots of horrible noises. So I think what's happened is since I've added the jumper wire into the uh, accessory plug, obviously that's allowed other problems to manifest themselves. And that's caused things to short, uh, to, to well, sh yeah, probably short overload, whatever. There's a fuse pop, sorry, so there's a resistor gone in there now we need to replace. There's also a big chunky five watt resistor here that's cut because I've been testing it. So this is very brown, this covering, this cover. And um, that obviously suggests a problem. So when I pulled it off, it's very black. So I think that's a 10 ohm resistor, I'm not sure. Maybe someone can confirm in the comments because yeah, I've looked on the chart. There's only, there's a couple of five watt resistors in the whole machine. And I think they're both rated, I think some of them are rated 10 and some are 1.3 ohm. So I'm not 100% sure what this one is actually. I'll have to uh, check. Anyway, I've got a bunch of these five watt resistors, different ratings on order and all the other bits and bobs that I need. And I've also got a recapping kit on order as well. So yes, at the moment the machine is dead and we need to bring it back to life. Now I am a true amateur at this. Obviously I'm taking great care when working on this machine. I'm aware of the high voltages and the need to, you know, allow it to drain or drain it manually, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, yeah, don't go working on, on one of these things without kind of understanding what you're, what you're up against. It did pop the fuse in the back. There's a three amp fuse here. I've replaced it with a one amp fuse temporarily. So, you know, I'd rather that pop than something else. Um, yeah, so that's where we're at. Loads of bits on order and we're gonna see if we can bring this thing back to life. So yeah, you're gonna see it firsthand. This is the first radio I've ever worked on in my life. I'm not a complete novice when it comes to electronics, but I'm definitely nowhere near being any kind of expert at this. A true amateur, all the gear and no idea. So if you fancy following along or perhaps helping me bring this thing back to life with some advice, please do give some sensible advice and leave the stupid comments for somebody else's video. Yeah, if you're gonna be, if you wanna help, please do. I, I really do appreciate it. So like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next update. I won't be banging on about this in every video. Obviously there's other stuff going on, Station Master and other things. This is just one little project that's going on in the background that I thought you might be interested in. All the best 7.3, G5 STU, bye-bye.